The story begins with a chance meeting in Paris between two extraordinary men. We're at the very beginning of the 20th century, at a turning point in history. Empire is at its height and facing decline. Modernism is about to come into being. On the 24th of March in uh, 1903, in Paris, in the dining room of the Hotel Regina, uh, an extraordinary chance meeting took, took place. Two scandalous figures of history that became very unlikely luncheon companions. Alistair Crowley was a notorious occultist, the self-styled great beast. He would later be called the wickedest man in the world. Intelligent and energetic, he was a brilliant chess player, an accomplished mountaineer, and a poet of sorts. But his principal ambition was to become a master of the dark arts, to actually possess magical powers. Major General Sir Hector MacDonald was a crofter's son from the Highlands of Scotland, who rose through the ranks to become one of the greatest heroes of the British Empire, known as Fighting Mac because he was utterly fearless in battle. MacDonald was in Ceylon when a terrible scandal broke. There were shocking accusations of homosexuality. The governor of the colony ordered him back to the motherland. MacDonald had gone back to London to consult with his superiors to try and find a way out of his predicament, a new posting or a new appointment somewhere maybe. He'd gone to see Roberts, his old boss, the commander-in-chief of the Imperial General Staff. But Roberts wasn't about to help him. In fact, the whole of the establishment turned their back on MacDonald and he was about to face a court-martial. A great, simple, lion-hearted man, with the spirit of a child, thought the beast as he caught sight of Hector MacDonald, taking lunch alone in the dining room of the Hotel Regina. The general sat to attention, ramrod straight, at first glance looking so strong and resolute. Only one of his hands betrayed him. It clawed at the white linen tablecloth, as if grasping at a ledge. It seems like there's no escape, and who should he meet but Alistair Crowley, and off they go into the night together, off on this strange journey of revelation, this strange astral flight. Crowley sees the general as an opportunity as well. He, he, he feels great sympathy for him, but he also feels that he can use him for his own purposes. Uh, so they, they go off together, and um, he puts him into a trance using strange drugs he's brought back from Mexico. And this enables the general, this allow, enables MacDonald to go back through his whole life and, and to sort of review it anew. We are going on a journey, the beast told him. Now he would liberate the general, unlock his shackles. The scandal could go up like fireworks, an explosion right in the heart of the empire. This too would be sex magic, with the power to transform the world. Yes, thought the beast. He would save MacDonald, but in order to do that, he would first have to damn him. I started out wanting to write about the relationship between imperialism and sexuality, of how repressed passion can generate tremendous power, how love's loss can be empire's gain. I also found myself writing about belief, not just the supposed certainties of Western colonialism, but the powerful idealism of an Islamic jihad in late 19th century Africa, as well as the weird and wonderful world of secret cults and mysticism. All of these things are explored on the course of one night, a wild night in Paris at the beginning of a new era. Modernism is going to bring with it some nasty surprises. The Devil's Paintbrush of the title is one of them. It is a book of revelations for Hector MacDonald and Alistair Crowley. For the reader too, I hope.